Welcome to video number 8 for Physics 102. This video is on some terminology you're going to need for our discussions on uniform circular motion. The first term, of course, we're going to need is what is uniform circular motion? Uniform circular motion is motion that is A, in a circle, and B, motion where the magnitude of the velocity is constant. This is the uniform part of the name. Here are a couple examples. The first example is the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The Earth moves in very, very close to a circle, and its speed as it goes around the Sun is constant. Here's another example. A common carnival ride where people on swings go around and around a circle. These people are also undergoing uniform circular motion. Beyond the definition itself of uniform circular motion, there are three more pieces of terminology you're going to need to know. The first is period, which we often represent with the letter T. Period is the time it takes for an object in uniform circular motion to go around once. It has the units of time. An example of is for the Earth going around the Sun, the period is one year. It takes one year for the Earth to go all the way around the Sun. Another related quantity is frequency, which we represent by the letter F. Frequency is the number of times an object goes around per second when undergoing uniform circular motion. Since it's per second, the unit is one over time, so it could be something like 20 times a second, once per day, or any other of many other options. For example, the frequency of the Earth's rotation is once per day, or 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5 per second. This unit of 1 over seconds has a special name, the Hertz, which we abbreviate big H, little z. Thus, the frequency of the Earth's rotation is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5 Hertz. Another frequency that you might come across is the so-called angular frequency, represented by the Greek letter omega. This is slightly different from regular frequency. Angular frequency is defined as 2 pi times the frequency we were just discussing. So it's a very related quantity, we're just multiplying by a factor of 2 pi. Physicists like this 2 pi for a host of different reasons. The units in this case are radians over time, so radians per second, radians per minute, radians per hour, whatever. Another important fact to keep in mind is that there are two pi radians to a revolution. So when an object goes all the way around the circle, it undergoes one revolution, or two pi radians. In essence, this is the definition of the angular measurement of the radian. Let's look at a short example problem using our problem-solving framework using these terminologies. A baseball pitchers often suffer from torn rotator cuffs in their shoulders from throwing so hard. A baseball pitcher's arm is usually in the neighborhood of 0.9 meters, and it completes one quarter of a circle in 39 milliseconds. The question is, what's the speed of the pitcher's hand? So let's begin by focusing on the problem and drawing a picture. So here we have our baseball pitcher. We know that the length of the arm is about 0.9 meters, and the arm goes around a quarter of a circle in 39 milliseconds. Now moving on to describe what's going on in words. The hand travels around a one-quarter circle in 39 milliseconds, and the radius of the circle around which it's traveling is 0.9 meters. As it goes around, it's undergoing uniform circular motion. Thinking about the approximations and constraints, is that the ball is essentially moving in uniform circular motion. The speed of the ball is essentially the same as it goes around. What are we solving for? Well, we're solving for the speed of the pitcher's hand, which will be measured in meters per second. Now let's move on and begin to describe the physics by drawing any coordinate systems or vectors or free body diagrams. Let's begin by drawing some vectors. Well, the one vector probably of interest here is the velocity of the ball. And we always know that velocity is parallel to the direction of motion, so we're going to have the ball velocity going thus. Notice that 
for the case of uniform circular motion, the velocity is going to be perpendicular to the radius. Since we're not really interested in the forces involved in this problem, that's what we'll get to in class next time, we don't really need any free body diagrams. Also, we probably don't really need any particular coordinate system for this problem. You could set one up, but it turns out we're not going to need one. And that's just from experience. This is a skill that you will develop as you do problems. You'll start to learn under what situations do you not actually need a coordinate system. So let's begin by defining some symbols. Well, we're looking for the magnitude of the velocity vector of the ball, which I'm going to call V sub ball. And that's what we're looking for, so I'm going to draw a circle around it. What other things in this problem can we assign symbols to? Well, we can use the T for the period of the ball as it goes around the circle. Now, the ball doesn't go all the way around the circle, but we know it goes around a quarter of a circle in 39 milliseconds. So, one quarter of the period is there for 39 milliseconds. We also know the radius of the circle around which the ball is traveling, 0.9 meters, the length of the pitcher's arm. So now that we've got all of these symbols and we know what we're looking for, let's start combining up the equations that we're going to need to solve this problem. We know that speed is distance divided by time. We can see this just from the units of speed, meters per second. We know the ball travels one quarter of a circle in 39 milliseconds. One full circumference, one full revolution, therefore takes the full period t. The distance the ball travels around a full circumference would be the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. And it travels one full circumference in the period t. This is the definition of period once around. So the speed of the ball is therefore the distance it travels, which is one full circumference divided by the period. Now we don't have the full circumference, we only have part of the circumference that the ball is going around. But that's okay. If we look at this expression, we know the radius of the circle, we can solve for the full period, from the fact that we know a quarter of a period is 39 milliseconds, 2 and pi are constants, and v ball is the quantity we're interested in. This problem, with slightly different numbers, is the problem you have to solve for the quiz for this video. This concludes this video.